Thanks, Derek. It is one of the most common New Year's resolutions. Be better with money. But almost 50% of people break their resolutions by the end of January. Yeah, one big reason for letting resolutions fall by the wayside is not having a plan to carry it out. In this morning, our good friend from the Retirement Education Foundation, Michael Mike Mazarant, uh, is with us with some helpful tips. It is January. Start fresh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I saw you talking earlier. Your gym goals are yeah. fantastic. Uh, and it's always, it's always common. Start on the Monday. Monday's a, it's a clean slate. Start on Mondays. Right. Yeah. And you can, you, you can start thinking about a budget. Maybe on right. Monday, sit yeah. down and, yeah. and put one together. Let's start with the very basics, though, Michael. Um, when we talk about financial literacy, it all, it, it, as much as people don't, maybe you don't want to look and budget, but you really have to, right? You have to. It is so important. And really, the first place to start, and it kind of sounds overly simplistic, but really, how much is coming in? You'd be surprised to know, some, a lot of people don't really know how much is coming in every single month. So what is your gross income pre-tax? What's your net income after tax? How much money's coming in? That's the first place to start. Okay. And then the first thing that's going now the out. the net, is the net more important than the gross? Why do you need to know, why is the gross important? So gross is important just to have a sense of where am I at from a, from a gross income perspective. But really, I mean, net income after tax is what's showing up in the bank account every single, gotcha. every two paycheck, every, every paycheck. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you've got that. Now, fixed expenses, we need to make sure that, so we have our you know, mortgage, a car note, all these things that are not gonna change on a, a whole lot on a monthly basis. Maybe groceries are pretty set typically. Those are important to make sure we tackle, to make sure that we know every single month what's coming in, and this amount every single month, no matter what's going out. That's the fixed basis. Right. Including that debt, and this is January, and perhaps a lot of people have you know high interest credit card debt from Christmas or what have you. How important is it to prioritize that debt? For sure, especially to your point, coming after the holidays, people racked up some credit card debt, and now they're thinking, okay, now it's time to pay the piper. Got to get that paid off. That paying off that high interest credit credit card debt is really important. That can snowball quickly. How and do people do? Well, I guess we'll get into that later. So right now, for just starting with the basics, yeah. Mm, okay. So, so you're listing that on your. Are you you're getting out a sheet of paper if, if you want, or I guess doing it on the. Computer. Everyone's different. Some people are tech savvy. They love their apps and their online tools. That yeah. You know, Mint.com is Honeydew, Rocket Money. There's a lot of different examples you can use, or get out the break out the pen and paper. Give me a pen and paper. I like a pen and paper <laughs> too. Old oh, school. So, so you're writing all this down in a column. How much you're bringing in, and then how much is going out is in a, a different column, probably. Exactly. And so once you get your fixed expense out of the way, okay, how much now do I have left over so to start tackling that debt and get that paid off as quickly as possible. The one on the screen here I think is an important one, Michael, because we talk all the time about budgets and I think so many people have it in their mind that when they make a budget they can't spend. Mm -hmm. They can spend this one, tickets for shows, dining out, video games, stuff like that. It is important to have a piece of that, right? It is, and so that's what's really interesting is people always think about budgeting as a negative thing. It doesn't have to be a negative thing. Once yeah. we kind of budgeted out, okay, I have this much coming in, I've got that much going out, and now you've discovered how much you have left over, and that's you can set that up for spending on the fun stuff. Mm -hmm. And now you can spend on the fun stuff guilt-free because you know it was in your budget. If you're spending willy-nilly with no budget at all, maybe you yeah. are overspending, now you're feeling guilty. Talk to me about these unplanned expenses. So people, on average have unplanned expenses every three to four years. This can be a health event, a car event, a hot water heater, the roof, something happens, vet bills. If you got pets, vet bills, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. So these things happen. And if someone thinks, you know, I've got my budget, money coming in, money going out, and they're spending everything all month long and not saving for any emergencies, you gotta have an emergency fund tucked away. How much though? So there's a lot of rule, rules of thumb on this. Typically, ideally, between three to six months of income okay. in case there's a, a work event, a health event, things of that nature. Okay. All right. So you're getting this all written down, and then um, you're talking about, your, so included in your budget is how much you want to save eventually? So you spend, ideally, spend, spend, so and once then, we've, if we have credit card de debt, get that knocked out. Once we have the credit card debt knocked out. That should be a priority out, before you're even dealing with saving or investing. Yeah. So you always want to get, if you're at a company with a 401k, you always 
want to get the match, at least get the 401k match. But once the credit card debt's knocked out, start increasing that 401k. Pay yourself before you can spend it somewhere else. Yeah. Especially with you know 401ks, 403bs, it's out of sight, out of mind. It's mm -hmm. automatic. You're not going to see it. It's not up to you to set it aside. It's much easier that way. Michael, question. Uh, I come from a, a family where my father, he was encouraging me to get in the 401k when I was working part-time at Taco Amigo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it wasn't even an option. I was 16 years old. But anyway, so that's been part of my mindset for a long time. But do people, are people unaware of the benefit of the 401k at this point? So it's becoming more and more mainstream. Is it underutilized? It, it is, you know, if, if someone's not using it, it's underutilized. It, people should be saving into it. Now, thankfully, there have been a lot of steps to auto-enroll people, and yeah. that's, that's moved the needle a ton. Because in the past, people might be working at an employer for one, five, ten years, and on day one with their benefits package, they're like, I'll do that later. And then 10 years later, they never got back to it. Right. But now they're auto enrolled with three, five, 10% up front to start with. And without even knowing it, they're saving to their 401 Tax free money going into a retirement savings account. It's fantastic. Yeah. Michael's coming back in hour number two. Uh, so more with Michael. Uh, we'll recap, we'll move the conversation get your pen forward. Paper out. Yeah, get it out. Get it out. Uh. All right, let's continue our talk. We're get, we are working on our financial literacy, getting right. smarter this morning. So last hour we talked to financial instructor Michael Mazarin from the Retirement Education Foundation about the importance of making a budget. So pencil, paper, app, however you want to do it. What's coming in? What's going out? So we've got that piece of it, and now just you know maybe the mental aspect of doing this, Michael, and in one of the ways to maybe stop crunching your budget so mm -hmm. much is to make more money. And that is, you know, especially with inflation, things cost more. That's the fact of the matter. So we can only crunch expenses down so low. At some point, the easier outcome might be increasing your income. So let's talk to our bosses, find out, okay, how do I get a raise this year? What are you looking for me to do? Can I get a, a license? Can I get a certificate to increase my skills, increase my income? Because sometimes, and for some people, this is often the case, increasing your income is easier than crunching down all the expenses. And if you increase your income, you can spend more on, on the fun stuff. And maybe even it, it, you, you can uh, have a uh, an extra job, uh, like a, we talk about DoorDash all the time. Go, right. You know, if, if you've got high interest debt, maybe uh, take that Uber job or Lyft job and, and use that money to knock down that debt. For sure, absolutely. Those things, I mean, really, especially the high interest debt and jumpstarting the savings, it goes such a long way. I know we, we keep mm -hmm. saying it, but mm -hmm. it really is two of the biggest things someone can do for themselves. Mm -hmm. Michael, let's talk about credit card debt because I feel like that is something that just keeps people awake at night. And mm -hmm. a lot of people, we know statistically, a lot of people are dealing with it. One mm -hmm. trillion dollars worth of debt. Um, so you have, you talk about snowball approach. What does that mean exactly? Exactly. So the two debt payoff strategies, the snowball approach and the avalanche approach. So snowball approach is if someone has, maybe if we have a couple different balances on a couple different credit cards, they pay off, they're paying off all their debts every month and they pay extra towards the smallest balance. And once the smallest balance is paid off, now we apply that same amount we were paying already to the next smallest balance, then the next smallest balance. Don't slow, just because one is paid off, don't slow down the payments. Mm -hmm. Keep the payments rolling to get everything paid off. So the avalanche methods a little bit different you take regardless of the debt size you take the highest interest amount and pay off the highest interest first because that's that's your most expensive debt that you have outstanding now there's a there's a there's a math side to this coin and a psychological side to this coin from a math perspective the avalanche methods better pay off your highest interest debt first but for some people, getting the small wins of having the smaller credit card paid off, okay. if that's easier to stick with, then stick with that one. It's fine. Whatever works best for you, go for it. Is there, uh, how do you coach people about avoiding stopping the habit of uh, gaining credit card debt? I mean, really, it comes down to a lot of tough love. Yeah. People, everyone wants to go do things. You know, I was actually, you know, some friends, that, some friends of mine, we're, we're considering the Rose Bowl. Mm -hmm. Michigan was in the Rose Bowl. We're all huge Michigan fans. It's the Rose Bowl. But we took, a, we took a friend's trip back in August. And so all the friends said, you know what? We just can't swing this. Mm -hmm. And I was really proud of them mm -hmm. because it'd be really easy to justify it's Michigan. It's the Rose Bowl. It's a, fan, it's a trip of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. But instead, we said, you know what? We just can't swing it. It's exactly what we were just talking about in that first block too with mm -hmm. you know loud budgeting being exactly. open and honest about where you are 
with you know your finances but again that goes to the psychological part of it do you have it in you to talk to your friends or your family about what you can and cannot do and really there are two ways to tackle it I mean I'm a competitive person by nature so I kind of it's kind of like me competing with myself how close can I stick to my budget and also you know there's the very serious implications of this is the real world. Mm -hmm. If we start to rack up credit card debt and get in trouble, that has really long-term negative consequences. It yeah, that a, one trip you'll be paying for it uh, for, for God knows how potentially long. years. Yes. It is a funny thing. The, the, the psychology of it is my husband used to say when he walks through a store and doesn't buy anything, he feels so good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? Goes home, doesn't have any extra stuff, doesn't spend any money. And me, when I go to the store, I feel good when I buy something. Right. So in evaluating that is um, psychology is huge crux of how we look at money. Psychology is huge. Some people are just better savers by nature, whether mm -hmm. it's an upbringing or whatever it is. Some people are, are better spenders. Mm -hmm. And just knowing yourself and knowing what's going to work for me is so important. And you mentioned, I, I heard you guys mention earlier, The Psychology of Money, Morgan Housel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He has a second book out it's called Same as Ever. Fantastic. Another so good example. Go. Yeah, I've read, read that one. I've read some of that one, actually. Yeah, it is good. It just talks about our habits and how um, or, or constantly moving on to the next. Mm -hmm. We want this suit so bad, so right. bad, we buy it, and then we run, we're moving on to the next thing. Right, and, and uh, you know, even uh, talk about a car, too. If you want a car in, um, in 2024, I just recently priced uh, my car out. Mm -hmm. My payment, if I got a new car, my payment, if I got the same car that I drive now, my payment would double. Mm. And so these are the things that people face every yeah. single day. Uh -huh. And so if we want that new car, what are we going to cut somewhere else? Yeah. It's got to be one thing coming in, one thing going out. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, one thing I did want to ask you about, for the people out there that, that work for themselves, mm -hmm. um, you know, you talked in the last segment about, uh, you know, uh, employment uh, sponsored 401k and things like that. What if you do work for yourself? A lot of people watching right now might be servers somewhere, might uh, drive uh, one of these, you know, make deliveries or whatever. What, what should those people do when it comes to investing? As I'm getting a rap cue, I'm so sorry. I'm <laughs> like asking you this question, but um, what should those people, where should those people start? So that's, it's a little tricky, but if, if you're a 1099 worker, mm -hmm. you know, there's a solo 401k, SEP IRA, or just a personal IRA, mm -hmm. personal Roth IRA. Those are, those are probably the easiest places to start. A personal mm -hmm. IRA, personal Roth IRA, start there. Good stuff. All right. Great information. Retirement. Yeah, say the website. Retirement because Planning. Planning. EDU.org. Nailed Reti it. Retirementplanningedu.org. And don't, it's overwhelming. Just start, just start with the budget. Start with one piece of paper mm -hmm. and just uh, start somewhere. Yeah. Exactly.